All right, good morning everybody and welcome to our worship gathering online of course if you're joining us on Facebook over there and here in person sure appreciate you all hang on just a second here there we go okay that way you can see my beautiful face I know you're all dying to see that welcome Today, today we're going to have a, for uh, our preaching time, we're going to have a little bit of a mini-series the next three weeks, focusing on a good life, and we're going to kind of talk about three different things that we can choose that will help us develop, over time, a good life. Today we have Donna Weaver with us as our liturgist, and she is going to kind of kick us off with our gathering words. I think that one in the, if you press and hold the power button. Draw near to God, and God will draw near to you. The Spirit calls us to kindness and peace. Humble our hearts, O God. Quiet our minds. Amen. Our opening song is 2004, Praise the Source of Faith and Learning. I believe the words will be on the screen for you to follow along. There we go. I'm not sure we have the the uh, black hymnal out here, so you'll have to follow along on the screen there. Let us begin. Praise the source of faith and learning that has sparked and stoked the mind with a passion for discerning how the world has been designed. Let the sense of wonder flowing from the wonders we survey keep our faith forever growing and renew our need to pray. God of wisdom, we acknowledge that our science and our art and the breadth of human knowledge only partial truth impart. Far beyond our calculation lies a depth we cannot sound where your purpose for creation and the pulse of life are found. May our faith redeem the blunder of believing that our thought has displaced the grounds for wonder which the ancient prophets taught. May our learning curb the error which unthinking faith can breed, lest we justify some terror with an antiquated creed. As two currents in a river fight each other's undertow, till converging they deliver one coherent steady flow. Blend, O God, our faith and learning, till they carve a single course, till they join as one returning praise and thanks to you, their source. Now that tune is probably very familiar to you, but I had never actually read those words to that particular hymn before, but that tune I knew. I don't know about you all if you'd ever heard that one before, but I particularly was struck by that last little verse, you know, this river of two 
sometimes fighting streams, faith and learning, and yet blending together to combine and make a single course. Beautiful. Love it. All right, now we're going to open up our floor for a time of sharing our joys and concerns. If you have either one of those things, please raise your hand and I'll come to you. If you're joining us online and you have a joy or a concern, please share those in the comments and we'll make sure to pray for them either here or in our different prayer uh, groups that meet throughout the week. Liz Chavez, um, a joy that uh, on Friday, Helen Lombard's uh, memorial was held here and it was wonderfully attended from people all walks of life and from different places. Um, her cousins uh, from Defer were here and, and a joy that um, our very own Cody was home with us safe and sound and able to preside and it was a lovely service. Yeah. Yes, thank you. And on that note, I just want to thank everyone so much for your prayers for my family as we were working through my mother's COVID diagnosis and treatment and the hospitalization. Uh, she is home and, and still on oxygen, of course, as many people are as they recover, but uh, she's doing really well and actually went out and got her hair and her nails done uh, a few days ago, kind of a like, okay, we're going back to a little bit of Normalcy still gets a little fatigued quite easily and um, starting to get her appetite back a little bit, but that's, those are two things that are still kind of going on. But thank you for your prayers. We sure appreciate it. And it's a joy to be back here out of quarantine. I got three negative tests because I was so uh, exposed while I was there. And I wanted to triply make sure that I could come back and join you. And here we are. So thank you so much for your prayers. If you would please join me in a time of prayer, and then we'll all come together for a version of the Lord's Prayer. Father, we come before you today. We, uh, we're your humble servants. Lord, we do pray, as we echo from our gathering words, that we would be tuned to your spirit calling us from words of wisdom to be servants of peace and grace and mercy and justice. We thank you for every opportunity we have to serve in that way. Lord, we do lift up to you now these prayers, these concerns that we've brought to you. We uh, continue to pray for uh, so many people still being affected by uh, this surge of the uh, new variant and the hospitals in particular that are overrun in our region. We lift up those workers to you. We pray for those nurses. We pray for those respiratory therapists. We pray for those doctors. We pray for the janitorial team that has to come in and clean and uh, so many moving parts in a hospital. And right now they're so uh, taxed and, uh, and stretched to the limits. Lord, we pray for those who are um, having to be turned away from the hospitals. Um, we pray that they find care. We pray that, uh, Lord, that this would subside uh, very quickly. Lord, we do thank you for the answered prayers that we've had this week, for those that we've been lifting up, my mother and many others. We're also thankful for the ability to come together like this here and join together for worship, but also for solemn moments like on Friday uh, for memorials. We thank you for the life of Helen. We thank you for the many different uh, facets of our community that she was involved with that came together and were able to celebrate, mourn, uh, and honor the life of Helen. Thank you for Donna and for Jim and their trip to be here to join us and the uh, wonderful job they did to uh, honor their cousin. Lord, I'm sure many other things that we're carrying with us, we lift those up to you. We pray, God, that you'd work in and through all these situations. And Lord, we thank you in advance for the way that you will work in these situations. And now, God, we join together to pray a version of the prayer you taught us to pray, saying, 
God, lover of us all, most holy one, help us to respond to you, to create what you want for us here on earth. Give us today enough for our needs. Forgive our weak and deliberate offenses, just as we forgive others when they hurt us. Help us to resist evil and to do what is good, for we are yours, endowed with your power to make our world whole. Amen. Now Donna will come read our scripture today from Proverbs. Our scripture reading this morning is Proverbs 31, verses 10 through 31. A capable wife who can find, she is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from far away. She rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and tasks for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff, and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid for her household when it snows, for all her household are clothed in crimson. She makes herself coverings. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the city gates, taking his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She supplies the merchants with sashes. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and, te and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her happy, her husband, too, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a share in the fruit of her hands, and let her works praise her in the city gates.
Hello, and welcome to Children's Moment. Today, I want to talk to you about sports. Now, it may be hard for you to make out. This is a softball, a plastic softball, that my little Luna uh, has loved on several times. And in fact, she is standing right here, waiting for me to be done with it so that she can love on it some more. Do you want it? No. Okay, I thought so. And they're off. Anywho, the reason I had a softball is because I want to talk to you about sports. And this is something I never thought I'd be talking to you about because I'm not very good at sports. Personally, I am kind of clumsy, a little awkward, and more often than not, I would catch a ball with my face than with my hands. So, uh, but we're going to talk about sports because there's something about sports that I want to talk about that's a lot like community. When you're on a sports team, I've heard that you do practice. Um, some of my friends have shared how they practiced every single day for most, for the week and sometimes on the weekends too. And that's incredible commitment. Like I'm, I'm floored by that. I, I don't know if I could be that committed to something like that in addition to all the schoolwork that many of my friends were doing at the same time. Um, but anyway, it takes a lot of commitment and time and work and support. They don't just practice on their own more often than not. They're practicing with their coach, maybe with a trainer, and probably with some teammates. And so today, when we're talking about community, it's the same idea. We need to practice to be a good community, just like we have to practice to be a good sports team. And we may be a little out of practice with that right now. Many of us have spent a lot of time in isolation this last year or two. And so we just haven't been around others to practice what that looks like. So it's okay if we're a little bit hesitant, a little bit worried coming into it, just like you'd be a little worried going into your first practice of a sport. Um, but again, we have support, you have support. You have uh, the people who look after you, your guardians, maybe your parents, uh, some I know have their grandparents looking after them. Um, you have the teachers that in your system to help. Maybe you're still online, and so it looks a little different help, but still help. And most importantly, your teammates, those around you who are your peers and friends, but also your fellow church members. And so with this in mind, let's be kind to ourselves and give ourselves some extra time to practice and remind ourselves the commitment it takes to be really good at a sport or really good at community. And in the same way, it may be hard at first because I, I wasn't very good. I was kind of clumsy at community too when I first started uh, really coming to church and joining in on different things. But pra with practice, it got to a point where I actually have led groups and have been a part of many very uh, enriching groups in the church. And I still am a part of the church family. And it means a lot to me to be able to be there with that. Um, and unlike other sports, there's less danger of physical harm, like with balls flying at your face, in most cases. So there's a lot less danger in messing up in community, because we're all kind of clumsy at it right now. So let's just get out there and try to have some fun. All right, that's a lot of sports analogies in one five minute video. Uh, Thank you for sticking with me. And I apologize in advance if I used any of those sport analogies wrong, because again, I actively try to avoid sports. I'm just, it's just not my thing. Um, kudos to those whose thing it is, but it's just not mine. Let's go ahead and have a prayer. 
<clears throat> Sorry. And I found another toy. Please take an attitude of prayer, whatever that looks like for you. Dear Lord God, thank you for this time together. Thank you for all the different ways we have to meet and be together. Please help us remember what it means to practice being in community and being a part of your family. Please walk with us as we stumble along, maybe trip over ourselves, and continue to learn. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, yes. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm back home now. Here we are, and we're going to do a little kind of like a, a three-week mini-series all about a good life, three things we can kind of choose that we can actively choose to help develop a good life. And today we're going to talk about <clears throat> a good community. And that's a good segue into me giving some huge thank yous to Chris and to Kyle and to Kalissa. Wow. I just realized it's uh, the, the uh, alliteration crew uh, filling in for me. And Cody. Whoa. Chris, Cody, Kyle, Kalissa. Wow. Okay. Anyway, uh, thank you to them. Uh, it's amazing to know that you can, you know, in a moment's notice, if you need to go, if, or if there's an emergency type of situation, to know that we do have a, a team, a community that is so strong and supportive and can, and can uh, kind of go right along uh, in support and enroll with the punches, so to speak, continuing the sports metaphors there. And uh, yeah, it's just huge. It's what a, a peace of mind that it gives to a pastor to know that, um, that that can happen. So thank you very much, and thank you to you all for your prayers and ongoing support. So many, uh, Some of you bringing food over to my family where, while we were gone so that they because um, we're still caring for my, <laughs> my mother-in-law at our house, and so it's hard to get out and go grocery shopping when two of us are there. When one's gone, nigh impossible. So thank you so much for that. Sure appreciate it. So today we are going to talk about a good community, and you might be scratching your head about the choice of the passage of Scripture. If we're talking about community, why did we do Proverbs 31, the Proverbs 31 woman, right? I know, you're all, in fact... I bet a lot of the ladies in here internally rolled their eyes when they heard this passage of Scripture. I, I know that because when I told Lisa today, or yesterday, that we were going to talk about Proverbs 31, she didn't internally roll her eyes. She outwardly rolled her eyes at me and said, and gave me a long list of why the, the, uh, the abuse that this uh, particular passage of Scripture has led to and I said, I know, I know, I know. Hang on, we're, the, I promise we're not going to, we're going to use it a little bit differently than maybe you've heard in the past. In fact, uh, uh, I had to bring these little bulletins here, and you'll notice <clears throat> there's no graphics on them. There's no pictures. Uh, Terry was filling in for um, Sheena and making the bulletins over in Lewiston, and she always usually provides a little graphic with the bulletin to, you know, just visibly break it up. But all she could find when she looked for Proverbs 31 stuff was Mother's Day stuff. And so that should tell you, you know, how that gets relegated to this passage of Scripture, what it gets used for. In fact, I have never preached from Proverbs 31 before. So here we go. We're going to, I'm going to blow the dust off this passage of Scripture a little bit, and I'm going to try to use it in a little bit different way. So the uh, you you all probably realize or have heard this past scripture used in a specific way maybe you walked into a christian bookstore and you've even seen on shelves you know proverbs 31 woman and here's how you can be you know these steps to be this type of woman and boy doesn't it sure seem like it's something that's just held over your your head a lot of times like here's this checklist of the perfect woman and Nobody can live up to it, can they? It's not, it's, it is impossible to live up to this thing. Um, there will be, uh, it's probably one of these passage scriptures you either love or hate and nothing in between and uh, wife of noble character, it says. And this woman, you know, you just read this passage scripture, this woman being described here, I, she is amazing, 
right? I mean, she is lacking nothing of value, the, the, the scripture says. She cooks dinner every night. She runs a thriving business. She takes care of the poor. And she dresses beautifully when she does it and doesn't worry about the future. In short, she's someone who's easy to hate, isn't she? Right? Do you know what I'm saying? She sets a standard that is, like I just said, flatly impossible to meet. And this is, this is what I could have just written down everything Lisa told me, you know, last night as an intro for the sermon, because uh, this is exactly what she told me. And her example is readily invoked to, I think, to encourage, but more often than not, to shame people, women, who reach for this maybe standard, and realize they can't meet it. And so I got to thinking that there's got to be another way to look at this wife of noble character passage. And here's, here's how I know that there's another way to look at it. What if we look at it this way and realize the context of the, the actual passage itself? You need to understand who wrote it, okay? In this book, Proverbs, it was a king, King Lemuel, who wrote it, Okay? And we're even told at the beginning of the passage, if you go all the way back to verse 1, in fact, before verse 1 of Proverbs 31, it will say a, you know, a, a thing written by King Lemuel based on teaching from his mother. Now, here's why this matters. You've got a son whose mother is telling him, here's who you should look for, you know, in a wife. And let me tell you, there is no person who sets a more impossible standard than a mother for a son. I, I can tell you as a son <laughs> of a mother, like nothing is good enough for her baby. You know, there's nothing good enough for my son. And so it starts to make sense that this is the, the list that this woman set for her son to be looking for. And I think if we can kind of like detach it away from, you know, this like Stepford Wives universe, you know, we can actually say, okay, let's tone down a little bit and let's see, this might have something to say to us, everybody, not just, you know, women in the world, but this is for everybody. And what it is, is it's not a guilt-inducing list of to-dos. I know that's how it's been used and that might be how it feels sometimes, but I'm going to say it's more like a description that a mother is giving to her child about the type of people he should surround himself with, you know? So it's not just the, the wife, you, you, like, you no, know, it, it's more than that. It's actually like, it's kind of like when I talk to my daughters and I see a friend <laughs> that gives me a little, eh, you know, a little radar, ding, 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 you know, going off, and I want to say to my daughter, not to, you know, I don't want to be domineering as a parent, but I also want to let her know, hey, you know, the people that you kind of surround yourself with matters. It truly does. In the, long run, it helps, in the long run, it helps form us into the people we are. It shapes our lives. So I think this instruction is not directed, or it's not directed at a woman, is it? It's directed to a son, Somebody, here's, I want you to, and the, the true point, the heart of it really is, I want you to look for somebody of noble character. I want you to find somebody, these people to surround yourself with who will help guide you in a good direction. Many of these characteristics of the woman described in Proverbs 31 aren't just characteristics that are good just for a woman. They're good for everybody, aren't they? right? Somebody who is, um, think about how your own life is impacted by the good people in them. The good friends that you've, you've held on to for a long time, how have they shaped who you are? I bet if we stopped and thought about it, you could probably list three to five people in your life who are, they majorly shaped you, beyond your parents, of course, but I mean people you chose to be in your life. And they shaped you in so many ways, with integrity, with honest. They exercised responsibility and care, uh, not just for themselves and for the things they own, but probably for you and your own life. They cared about how you were feeling. They recognized, this is somebody right now who needs a little extra care and love. And didn't that 
start to shape who you were as a person and how you respond to people. You begin to show empathy and kindness to those who are less fortunate when you've seen it modeled for you. I bet you have. So this is a passage, a, a, an oracle it's even called, by a mother to a son, basically saying, son, you know, I'm not going to be here <laughs> your whole life. I would love for you to surround yourself, including, yes, obviously your marriage partner, but I would like you to surround yourself with people, a community who care about you, care about your in integrity and how you're being shaped. I want you to keep such company because it will encourage you to be trustworthy and a person of integrity and generous and kind. So when you think about what it takes to make and live a good life, I think one of the things that, that absolutely goes into shaping a good life is the community you choose to surround yourself with. As Kaylissa mentioned, you know, it takes practice. And um, my youngest child, one thing, like this is going to be a lifelong thing, I know, uh, for uh, this particular child, wants to give up very easily when everything is not perfect. So, for example, yesterday, <clears throat> we were sitting down and we were drawing, and the drawing was not coming out perfect. And through the through the, ta the, the pages said, no, I'm never going to be good at this. I'm not good enough and stormed off. But how do we get to anything? It's through repetition. We do, we start being bad members <laughs> of community, you know, as Kalissa mentioned. You know, sometimes we're awkward and sometimes we're confusing and, and confused. And sometimes we don't know what to do. Anytime you go to somewhere new and you, you know that this is a community, maybe they have, you know, what's, I don't know what their standards are. I don't know when do I stand, when do I sit, who, who's who and who's what. But we begin with that first, like, I'm choosing to be a part of this community. And I'm going to show up over and over and over and over again until community just clicks. And then I've learned in the process, why. Well, they have shaped me into something, too. It's a give and take, this community thing, and we need each other. We need each other. Uh, I, I don't, if these last 18 going on to two years hasn't taught us anything, or has taught us anything, it's that how much we do rely on each other, depend on each other, and really, it's almost like a fire that refines, right? We know now who it is we hold on to in times like these. These are the people who shape me, who are here for me, and that I want to be there for too. So blessing and curse time, fire, cleansing, purifying, strengthening time. Amen? So let's move forward today choosing to be part of a community here and beyond and pay attention to how we're shaping other people's lives, and how they're shaping us too. Let's pray. God, I'm thankful for passages of Scripture like this that sometimes get used in weird ways and, and can be misunderstood. But Lord, I'm thankful that we can look at them again and we can glean some truth that will help us. Lord, I pray for every single one of us here, joining online, here in person, that we would actively choose people to surround ourselves with who model integrity, honesty, sincerity, generosity, care, concern, so that, Lord, we may choose the direction of our life too. Uh, iron sharpens iron, and uh, the people we surround ourselves with shape us too. So Lord, I pray that we would be discerning in our choices and that we also would be open to also uh, to other people in, in their life as well being a part of a community. We love you, God, and we thank you for the gift of community. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
All right, at this point, we're going to go to our offering time, and I'll talk about the ways we can uh, give while we're, uh, if you're joining us online and you can't make it in person. So I'll walk around with a little offering plate, and I'll describe those ways to you online. If you're joining us and you want to give, uh, one of the best ways is to send a, a check-in. And if you, I'm, uh-oh, I didn't grab the offering plates today, did I? <laughs> All right, so if you're here in person and you have something to give, right after service, I'll run and grab the offering plate and I'll set it on the table back here. So for everyone here, that's how you can do that. But if you are joining us online, go ahead and send a check in. You can mail it to one of these addresses. They are uh, on the screen there, or you can find them. There we go. Kyle knew where it was up. This was probably set up for the memorial time. Another good way is to just go ahead and bring those checks in or your money or your tithes in. You can just call ahead to the office and ask uh, what the hours are and when somebody will be there. And we'll make sure to, oh, thank you, uh, be there for that. Another way to give is online. Both websites of the churches have a way to do that. For Clarkson, it's the big green button over on the right. You just click that and set up your giving. And for Lewiston, over on the right-hand side, you hit that Contact Us uh, tab and then hit the Donate tab. Or you can download an app on your smartphone. That's another easy way to do it. For Clarkson, it's the Tithely app, T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y. Download it and search for Clarkston UMC. Then for Lewiston, it's the Give Plus mobile app. Download that on your phone and then search for Lewiston First UMC. Today, a extra giving focus. If you have a little extra money and you want to give it to beyond the church, I'm encouraging you to go to the World Relief Spokane website. And right now they are really working hard with some refugees from Afghan, uh, from Afghanistan. And uh, so you can, there's the website there, worldrelief.org slash Spokane. And then you can find the information about their specific projects right now, helping out the uh, surge of refugees that they're working with. As always, thank you so much for your generosity. We sure appreciate all that you've uh, done during this time that's just weird and wild. It's really helped keep us going and serving. And if you would, please join me for a prayer for the offering, and then Chris will play a little uh, offertory piece. God, we thank you so much for your grace, for your mercy. We thank you for these gifts that will be given today and this week. We pray your blessings upon them, that we might use these as tools to uh, develop good community for everyone we come into contact with. Lord, we love you and we thank you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We do have a closing song here. It's in the, it is in the hymnal if you want to follow along there, but the words will be on there. It's hymn number 421. Make me a captive Lord. Let us begin. Make me a captive Lord, and then I shall be free. Force me to render up my sword, and I shall conqueror be. I sink in life's alarms when by myself I stand. Imprison me within thine arms, and strong shall be my hand. My heart is weak and poor until it master find. It has no spring of action sure, it varies with the wind. It cannot freely move till thou hast wrought its chain. Enslave it with thy matchless love, and deathless it shall reign. My power is faint and low till I have learned to serve. It lacks the needed fire to glow. It lacks the breeze to nerve. It cannot drive the world until itself be driven. Its flag can only be unfurled when thou shalt breathe from heaven. My will is not mine own till thou hast made it thine. 
If it would reach a monarch's throne, it must its crown resign. It only stands unbent amid the clashing, clashing strife when on thy bosom it has lent and found in thee its life. few announcements of course dvd audio always available if there's anything in particular you'd like let us know we'll make sure you get it one thing that i don't have a slide for uh next month we will have our uh church conference charge conference time with our new ds uh, daniel miranda it's going to take place via zoom and it is we were hoping for october 24th but it's set actually for october 17th that's what would work for Daniel and for Sheila, his wife. She's also there kind of a, a, a team as DS. So I will have the exact times for you by next week um, w when that will be. But we will be joining via Zoom with Daniel, Sheila. Um, there'll be a, a special time for the SPR and Daniel and then a time for the whole uh, charge or whole church to join in together for the conference. So those details will be coming here real quickly for you. We'll be emailing them out, sending them out, talking about them here. Make sure you get those details. And that's all I have, I think, for special announcements. But is there anything going on in the community that we need to be aware of or know about? Okay. All right. With that, then, let me send you off with a benediction. This is a responsive one, so if you would... Respond with the red bold type. We go now to serve. Loving every person we encounter. In all the places we can. Amen. Peace be with you.